class, the following is done. Bulletins, inserts, announcement PowerPoint, the slide I need for the van, uh, service outlines for AM and P, you know, all bathroom. I said, all that's got to be done before you can leave. And so she got everything printed on Thursday night late. I mean, it was like 10 or 11 o'clock Thursday night. And uh, I said, if you'll leave those bulletins, we'll fold them for you. Uh, we didn't make her fold bulletins, but uh, I, I am uh, glad they've had a great time and I'm ready for them to come home. I'm, I'm missing my baby. She's not called me at all. She's making a habit of that, uh, going away and just assuming that I know she's okay unless I hear from her. And uh, I was talking to a parent this morning and I asked a dad, I said, have y'all heard from and called their, their child's name? And he's like, no, and mom's not real happy that he hasn't called at all since he's been gone. And I said, well, don't feel bad. Mine hasn't either, and uh, I guess that means we're having a good time in the Lord. He said, yeah, I told mom it was okay. It was okay. So that's the way it goes. I guess they grow up, and they think they're on their own, and and uh, I'll remind them. I'll remind mine when she gets home that uh, she still lives in my house, and, and uh, we still provide her clothes, well, some of them. She buys some of hers now, and we still feed her and provide water. Well, you provide that for us, but we'll make her think we provide it, and... Uh, and uh, she could call home every now and then. It would be okay. And so I'm ready for her to come home. Stand with me, if you will, for the reading of God's Word tonight. Good Sunday night crowd. I, I am aware of the elements. I'm aware of the, uh, the schedule. I'm aware of all that you've done for Jesus. Um, but I'm glad we're in a Sunday night service. Amen? Amen? Glad we don't just stay home because others do. I'm glad we come together with a family of faith tonight. And say, Lord, I want to just dig into your word. I could leave now and say, and it's been good. I've enjoyed the worship. I've enjoyed the music. I've enjoyed the fellowship. Uh, but I want to enjoy the word of God tonight. Those that are from, with us from Lakeside, thank you for being here. Pastor Ricky, I try to always mention him. I just think he's part of us. And, uh, but he does pastor his own church. And so I try to uh, make sure I let, I let him know that I know he knows. I know. I want him to know that he knows that I know that he pastors a church. But uh, that still didn't come out right. But you know what I mean. Glad to have you here tonight. Amen. Those from Christmas are back, and, and I know I said earlier there's no Sunday night service Easter, so that means some of you I see on Sunday I won't see. So make sure you don't miss between now and then. Uh, when we don't have Sunday night services, we miss our folks that are with us. And we're privileged to have several folks that join us on Sunday nights for church and um, that are in their churches on Sunday morning, and I appreciate uh, your faithfulness to the house of God, along with all the home folks. Missed some of you this morning. You made it back in tonight. I guess the time change caught up with you. And uh, you couldn't roll out of bed this morning. And I don't know if that was the case or not, but we're glad you're here tonight. Jonah chapter number one. I didn't finish this morning, and I wanted to. Uh, so I'm going to finish tonight. The Lord will let me. Hallelujah. You know the text. We'll read it briefly just to set the foundation, and we'll pray. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah, and he said to Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah decided to do what some of us do. Verse 2 says, uh, uh, verse 3 says, Jonah rose up and went to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. I focused on that this morning. And went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. He paid the fare thereof and went down into it and went and to Tarshish, to go into them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. I was reminded as I was read the text last night and read the text this morning, read it again tonight. One of the trivia questions for the students this past week on Friday was, where did Jonah buy his ticket at when he was not going to Nineveh? What is the answer? It's Joppa. And so it kind of just recorded with me that of all the questions. You remember, you remember the night he preached, uh, the evangelist did, and he used the word, uh, he used the phrase, uh, bad breath in the Bible. You remember that night? And he, he said, some of y'all didn't remember that. Can I tell you that was a trivia question on Friday for our students? So what, what character or, or where is it mentioned about bad breath in the Bible? And uh, we didn't get that one right, but they all remembered the preacher saying it uh, after we talked about it. So uh, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, said, Arise, go to Nineveh, cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah went somewhere else. Jonah fled into Tarshish. From the presence of the Lord. He went to Joppa. He bought the ticket, paid the fare, went down from the presence of the Lord. For a little while tonight, I'm going to continue, hopefully finish on the thought from this morning where it says running 
from God. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the privilege we have to be in your house. Thank you for these, your people. Thank you, Lord, for the, the love and the, the grace and the mercy that you showed upon us, God, when you sent Jesus to die on Calvary. Lord, and I publicly say that I have many times went the opposite direction. I have failed you. Lord, I've not always done that that you've asked, but God, you've been merciful to me, and I am thankful for that. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for putting me on the right track. Tonight, Lord, I want to encourage us as believers of the Word of God, believers in Jesus. Jesus, that if we ever come across an opportunity, Lord, when it seems the road that you have laid out before us is too heavy, and we think we might want to run from you, we think we might want to go a different direction, I pray that this uh, this text and this scripture and this message, uh, Lord, will come back to our memory, will remind ourselves uh, that we need never to run from your presence, uh, for that is always a downward journey, it's always a downward spiral, but Lord, tonight I want to reaffirm my commitment to you, uh, I want to reaffirm my desire Lord to follow after you I need you in my life every moment every day every step that I take I need you Lord thank you for your word of God tonight and we'll forever be grateful for it in the name of Jesus we pray and the church said amen Amen. and amen tonight you may be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight I won't recap everything from this morning but can I remind you that Jonah is a story of I believe God's just a divine direction when Jonah decided to go wrong God did not give up on Jonah and I'm thankful for that tonight I'm thankful that when I decided to go away different from the Lord he didn't give up on me but he came after me he pursued me he allowed the convicting power of the Holy Ghost to touch my life and I thank God that one day I realized I I needed more than what I had. I needed more than what the world could offer. And I gave my life to Jesus. And it's been the best thing that I've ever done. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Jonah said, oh no, I'm going to go a different direction. Jonah said, I'm not going to Nineveh. Now you can... You can study and preach it the way uh, you want to read and study it later. But we learned this morning that, that Nineveh wasn't a small city. Uh, one of the studies said that it, it was a large city. It, it, it was a, a over one half million people. It was one of extreme wickedness. According to the Bible, the Word of God says their wickedness has come up before me. Uh, I mentioned to you this morning, Nah- Nahum called it the bloody city. A city full of lies and robbery. So we know uh, by several different references that it was not a very very good place but aren't you thankful when we're bad God still loves us aren't you thankful that when we're ate up with sin from the inside out Jesus still said I'll go and I'll pay the price and and I'll give my life for them I'm thankful for that because what I deserved was hell what I deserved was was, was judgment but he said I love them so much I'll go after them I'll make a way of salvation if they'll commit their life to me he'll make it all anew and I'm thankful for that tonight but Jonah said oh no I'm not going that way Jonah said no no whether it's he didn't feel they were worthy of the Lord whether he just didn't want to go deal with it you know you you can study many different lines of thought there but what we do know is Jonah said no I'll take the first boat out of here I don't care where it leads me I don't care where it's going I'm going down to that port I'm going to buy me a ticket and I'm going to be out of here the first boat that I can and I used that this morning and I preached about that for a little bit and said sometimes if we're not careful we'll be that way in our own life. Something will go wrong or, or God will press upon us to, to draw closer to Him and, and we're struggling with it and we're concerned about it. So, so we begin to blame everything on everybody else and we find the first boatload that's going a different direction and we're out of here. Amen? And that's one reason why we have people that go from church to church to church. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. That wall looks real nice. Church to church to church to church because they try to stay ahead of the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. But can I tell you, like I said, this I'm getting to the new points, but let me re-preach it for those that wouldn't hear this morning. I feel good tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, the Spirit of God won't leave you alone. Amen? He will pursue after you, and I'm thankful for that tonight because sometimes we're stubborn. Sometimes we don't get it right the first time. Sometimes we need God to help us, and I'm so thankful just like He did 
did Jonah he pursued after him the spirit of God has a way to get a hold of us when we don't even know what to do he has a way of pursuing after you and Jonah we realize was pursued by God how do you know that pastor well they got on that boat going somewhere that they weren't supposed to be going not the other folks but Jonah the other folks I guess were okay to go there but Jonah was going the wrong direction and the great tempest came up and you know the story it got bad I mean it got real bad they said man call out to your Lord call out upon him and let's find out what's going on Jonah knew the wrong uh, what was going on Jonah knew he said I am the one just cast me over isn't it funny when we mess up isn't it funny when, when, when we mess up you know we, we don't really have to be told we, we know we've messed up we know that little voice speaks to the inside of us and that tugging on the heart sometimes we want everybody to say now brother it's okay but you know you know if you've messed up I'm thankful for that still small voice that speaks to me and says oh, oh buddy he, 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 don't, he don't call me pastor he says hey you that wasn't the right thing to say or, hey you that wasn't the right attitude. you answered too sharply in that area you didn't have enough compassion you believe that you believe that I do Sister Wendy reminds me all the time, honey, have a little more compassion. I, I'm trying, trying. Thankful for that still small voice. And when I think the yoke is overloading, I'm reminded that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And, and I, I caught a glimpse of a show this afternoon uh, about being unequally yoked together. And, and, and it made perfect sense to me. If I'm yoking uh, two animals together, the Old Testament forbid them from yoking uh, different animals. You didn't yoke uh, an oxen with, with, uh, with a mule. You, you didn't do that. You yoked two oxen or you yoked two mules. Uh, and, and, and you didn't yoke one that was alive and one that was dead. I mean, imagine if I was yoked to somebody who was physically dead. Uh, I'd have to pull my weight and their weight too. Uh, but when I got yoked up with Jesus, amen, uh, I, I realized that so sometimes uh, I, I, I'm not all I need to be, but when I'm yoked up to Jesus, uh, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And Jonah ran a different way and God pursued him and God sent the wind and God allowed the wind to come. And we read out of Psalms uh, that he bringeth the wind out of his treasuries and that wind became a messenger. That wind became a a message, a messenger to that wayward man, that wayward prophet and he allowed the, the wind to come and not only the wind, but then I preached to you this morning that that great fish was right where it was supposed to be at the right time Amen. that still amazes me, I still get amazed about a man going over the water going over the boat in the water and they're just being I just get amazed I think it's phenomenal but I believe it happened amen I believe that great fish was there we realize in the Old Testament it's recorded and I mentioned this morning they argue over if it's true or not but I also referenced it to you in Matthew I believe it was in the New Testament where Jesus even referenced Jonas and the, and the whale and he said as Jonas was in the belly of the whale three days so will the son of man be in the belly of the earth the heart of the earth three days and we know that happened so I I believe Jonah was there. I believe God pursued him. I believe the storm came. I believe the well was there. I believe he spent three days in the belly of the well. I believe he prayed. Amen. Oh, yeah. Well, Pastor, he's praying because he's in a situation. Well, ain't that when you pray? Now, as Christians and as believers, we should pray in the good times and the bad times. But I guarantee you, in the bad times, you're going to pray. Don't blame Jonah. You're the same way. It ain't going right at the house. I'm going to pray. Any good husband will pray when it ain't going right at the house. Amen. It's going good, but I'm going to pray anyhow. Our frustration, our confusion, our mental disturbances of the day are brought about by a lack of willingness on the part of humanity to simply conform to the will and the call of the Almighty God. All the Lord wanted Jonah to do was go and preach to Nineveh. All he wanted him to do was be obedient. Can I tell you that's all God wants you to do tonight? 
He just wants you to be obedient, to follow His leading, allow Him to be the Lord of your life. And all of this frustration and confusion and mental issues are brought about simply because we choose not to conform to the will and the call of an Almighty Lord. Some are fleeing from the presence of the Lord to avoid the call of God or to avoid a ministry. Others are endeavoring to evade circumstances. They're saying, God, I don't want to deal with it. Others are trying to hide their sin, whatever the reason is they're running away from God and all God wants to do is say look if you'll give it all to me if you'll follow me if you'll let me be God I'll take care of you too I believe it if you're running from a call of God remember God does not require anything of you but what he will give you, you what, what he will give you is grace to carry out the call I'm so thankful for that I've had young, young ministers and others in my office, Pastor, I, I feel God's doing this, or I believe God's doing this, or I, wanted, I don't know if I can do it. You can't do it by yourself. I can't be a husband without God touching my life. Not the husband I need to be. I can't be a father. I, I, I told you the baseball story this morning. It was great. I loved it. Maybe you still got that money. You spent it all. She still got it. All right, good. I need to borrow money from McDonald's tonight. We'll see. She's consistent, Sister Renfro, isn't she? Sister Renfro asked her, Mariah, you got $20 I can borrow playing with her? She says, no, no, no thank you. We told her last, Wendy says, when Sister Renfro asks you for money, you tell her, yes, ma'am, how much does she need? She said, well, Mom, she was just playing with me. Wendy said, I know that, but you still, you give her. If she asks, you give it to her. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm glad. When I make a mistake, God pursues after me. And when he calls me, if I can ever settle in my mind, if God is pursuing me for a call, for a ministry, for a job, for, for, for something in the house of the Lord or ministry, I must remind myself as I remind you uh, that he says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, uh, my grace uh, is sufficient for thee. I can't do it without his touch. You can't do it without his touch. I was on those young ministers that I have come by and those that I talk to and those we work with. And I said, you know, they'll say, Pastor, I can't do that. Or Brother Odom, I can't do that. I don't know. You can't do it without God. I wouldn't want to try to do it without God. I wouldn't want to go to Walmart without the Holy Ghost. Amen? Because if you ain't saved when you go there, you, you oh, Lord Jesus. Number two, new point. Number two, not only will God pursue you, but you cannot escape the presence of God. Now, part of me wants to shout because that means no matter where I'm at, God's there. Amen? No matter what I face, no matter how low, how heavy the load is or, or, or how deep that valley is, God will be there with me. If you're running from God trying to evade circumstances, trying to cover up sin, trying to run from a call in ministry, remember the only way you will ever overcome the circumstance that you encounter is to face that circumstance through the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. To the power of the third person of the Godhead. If you're trying to flee from your sins, there is only one safe place, and that is beneath the red, the ruby red beads of blood that flowed from Calvary's throne. That is underneath the fount of God that still washes away my sins. Psalms 90 says, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins is in the light of thy countenance. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed neither hid that thou shalt that thou shalt not that shall not be known I, I realize tonight that no matter how well I try to hide it no matter how well I try to cover it up when I lived a life of sin Jesus still knew the answer and if it's not put under the blood of Jesus it will be open for all to hear and for open all to see and I say God thank you not only not only do you pursue after me but your presence I, I can never run away from I'll never escape the presence of God can you say amen for that I need his presence I don't need to run and listen to the 12 steps for financial freedom I'm thankful for all those but my father owns it all he's given me in his word the financial plan for my life amen 
I'm thankful for doctors, thankful for bankers, thankful for all of those things, but I don't put my confidence solely in them. I say, God, I will use the wisdom that you've given us and given them. But, Lord, I must realize, I must realize that I must follow you. Your presence can never, never be outran. Our hearts are before the Lord. And the eyes of the Lord go back and forth and to and fro throughout the whole earth. There is an all-seeing eye that continually follows the acts of men, leaving them bare, leaving them bare before the judge of heaven. No man, no man, no woman, no child can cover his sin or, and prosper can I tell you that if you're in sin or those around you are in sin and it seems that they're prospering it will last but for a moment for the wages of sin is death and we realize that instead of fleeing from God we need to flee toward God we need to find Calvary we need to get back to the foot of the cross we need to realize that when we're at the foot of the cross his sins will be set free amen my life will be changed those sins will not only be removed from my life but they'll be cast into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west erased from the memory of God never ever 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 to be remembered against me again can never escape his presence sin causes man to flee from God pastor are you are you sure can, can you make that kind of a direct statement about everybody's sin causes man to flee from God I can go back to Genesis chapter 3 ever since Adam and Eve sinned man has tried to justify himself before God and to cover his sins from the sight of man listen to what it says the eyes of them speaking of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 7 and 8 the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day just I'm adding this just as he did every single day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden so way back in Genesis way back with Adam and Eve we find we try to cover up our sin, try to cover up the things in our life. Do you really think God didn't know where Adam and Eve was? Do you really think God didn't see it as it was happening? Do you really think he had to say, Adam, where art thou? He knew exactly where they were. And if he knows where they're at, he knows where you and I are at tonight. Whether we're living right and holy before him, or if we're polluted with sin in our life, or if we're up one moment and down the next, you cannot escape the presence of the Lord. You might successfully hide your infidelity from your wife. You might successfully hide the hypocrisy from your pastor. You might successfully hide lying and cheating and stealing. You might successfully hide your immorality from your neighbors. But you cannot hide yourself from an omnipresent God. Well, pastor, what I do in my house is between me and my house. Okay and God pastor what I do in my family is my business and nobody else's okay but God knows and you can choose to agree with that or not the word of God says he is everywhere and he knows the deeds he knows the very intents of the heart think about it oh Lord I I, I don't want to leave your presence God I, I want to be close to him amen God is not localized God is not confined to a particular location for the heavens of heavens cannot contain him a change of environment will not take you out of the territory of his omnipresence a, a, a change of here I go again that wall looks good a change of churches a change of houses a change of denominations won't fix your problem if it's rooted and grounded in sin why? Because the church, the pastor, the denomination, the music style, all of that is not the issue. The issue is embedded inside of you and it's called sin. Amen, pastor. Amen. Jeremiah, let, let me read this to you. We realize that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Talking about you can't get anywhere God's not. And we realize that Jeremiah said, said this or God said this recorded in Jeremiah Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, saith the Lord? 
Or in other words, the psalmist said it like this. Whether shall I go from thy spirit? Or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in, in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, and even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. You cannot escape the presence of the Lord, my friend. There is no reason trying. There is no reason to try to cover it up where everybody thinks it's okay. No, if you're saved and on your way to heaven, glory be to God. You draw nigh to Him every day. If you've got sin in your life or you're dabbling in things you shouldn't be dabbling in, you need to run away from that and run toward God because you will never escape the presence of the Lord. I have heard it said, and, and, and I'm not proud of my life, as a teenager but there was a time when I wasn't living right and I've shared that with you and going through those things in life but I can tell you uh, there wasn't a night that I laid my head on my pillow with the oh Lord I hope Jesus don't come tonight why because I had realized the presence of the Lord was so real in the times that I've allowed him to be my Lord and I believed the word of God and I believed that I couldn't escape what the word says and there were nights that I laid down and said God I hope Jesus don't come tonight because if he did I didn't believe I'd make it but aren't you glad when you give it to Jesus it's all okay you cannot escape the presence of the Lord number three tonight the journey oh it's a journey the journey away from God is a downward journey I mentioned this point briefly this morning in closing say downward journey down, down, down. Can I use a, an example that we're all well familiar with, either a family member, hopefully not, but our families are polluted with this today, or at least you can understand the concept at a very high level, the effect of drugs and alcohol in our families today. You, you talk to someone who was ate up with uh, an addiction to drugs and alcohol, and they'll tell you, oh, I didn't start like this. And they didn't. They'll tell you, they'll tell a mom, they'll tell a dad, they'll tell a wife, oh, I didn't start using all of this in one day. It was just a little here and a little there. And that little became a little bit more and a little bit more. And it was a downward, downward journey in their life until some will say after years of abuse, sometimes as little as five or six or seven years of abuse, they are not even the same person to look at as they were five years ago because of the effects of sin in their life. And I'm using that because all of us can understand that concept. But can I tell you, it doesn't matter if it's drug and alcohol, if it's lying, if it's cheating, if it's gambling. It doesn't matter what it is. Sin is sin. And sin will take you in a downward journey. And you don't need to be dealing with sin. My friend, there is no place on earth that you can escape the presence of God. Notice uh, what Jonah did. Jonah got aboard the ship. The Bible says he paid the fare thereof. He put out money. He put out money. He put out money. A journey from God always uh, is the most expensive one that, that one can take. Uh, if the initial fare, if buying that first ticket, if buying that, that and I, again, I'm using the drug and alcohol concept to paint the picture, but sin is sin. Uh, well, whatever that first dabble of sin is, uh, it may not be too expensive, you think, but the next one will build, and the next one will build. Uh, and if that initial one is not that expensive, uh, can I remind you the cost of the final trip uh, will be much more than you want to pay because Romans 6 and 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death or in our words today the wages of sin is hell the journey away from God might seem like an attractive tourist event it may seem like it's lucrative it may seem that it's great but it will always leave you broke and it will always leave you penniless it's a downward journey the initial cost wasn't much for Jonah but his final fare left him with absolutely nothing. Think about where he ended up before God gave him a second chance. In the belly of a great fish. Well, Dad, what would you do today? Well, son, I ended up in the belly of a great fish. Nothing to write home about. I'm not sure how you'd get mail out of the belly of the fish anyhow. Can I tell you, I'm so thankful that when I was at my lowest, lowest point, when I found myself in that downward spiral, Jesus still loved me. That initial cost wasn't much, but man, it left Jonah penniless. There arose mighty famine, if you will. Flip over it with me to that parable of the prodigal son. 
that prodigal son ran from his father. He paid for the trip. You know the story. He had everything he thought he needed. But then there arose a mighty famine in the land. He spent all that he had. He began to be in want. Just a downward, downward, downward journey. Until in Luke 15 and 17, he used these words. I perish. Now this is, this is the boy that had everything. But we can parallel that with the effects of sin in our life. We're not careful. It's a downward, downward, downward journey. That is the cost of running from God. Weary of the constant struggle from God. Wearied from the constant struggle of that call to ministry, that call to holiness, that call to do something. Jonah fell fast asleep. Do you remember the story? They had to go wake him up and say, pray, boy, pray. We're about to die, and you sleep and weary. Can I tell you, when you're not where you need to be with God, it will take an emotional and physical toll on you that nobody will be able to help you with unless you just give it to God. Pastor, they got programs they do, and they're good, but they won't fill all of it. Pastor, I can do this, and I can do this, and take this to get up with, and take this to go to bed with. Yes, and that life of your if living will just continue to spin out of control. And wearied from his struggle, wearied from that, 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 that struggle of saying, I'm not going to go to Nineveh. Jonah fell fast asleep. He was not even aware of the danger he was in. He was not even aware of the storm. He was not even aware that his life uh, was in the balance. He was not even aware why he was so wearied and so, so mentally just drained uh, that he was not even aware he went to sleep. Uh, and that's what sin will do for you. It will blind you uh, to the effects of sin in your life. Uh, he had been hardened to the call. Uh, he had been hardened to the moving of God in his life. Uh, and can I tell you that a constant and a persistent running from God uh, will cause you to lose your spiritual sensitivity it will cause you to say how did I get to this place when you finally realize uh, like the prodigal son was and says I perish listen to me he became hardened through the deceitfulness of sin a repeated rejection of God and his message and a repeated rejection of God's messengers will soon cause one to become hardened and calloused until his conscience is seared and he is past feeling. Pastor, I don't like that kind of preaching. It's true, though. Church, we've become, especially in our country, where you know, we come for a worship experience on Sunday. And some of us will never, and I don't mean us here, I mean us in, as a church at large, We'll leave Sunday experience and never have a, another experience until the next Sunday. That's hogwash. I am in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus. He wants to hear from me more than just on a Sunday morning worship experience. He's done too much for me to put him on a shelf Monday through Saturday. Amen? I have to realize that I don't want my spiritual sensitivity to become calloused and hardened. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. If you translate this, it says the whole world lies in the lap of the wicked one. Let me ask you, have you repeatedly rejected the call of God until the gospel no longer attracts you? Pastor, I'm here every service. It's not what I ask you. I ask you, have you repeatedly rejected the call to do whatever God has called you to do? To, for some, it may simply be giving your heart to Jesus in this service. For some, it may be a call to, to push you out a little deeper in the waters. For some, it may be a call to ministry. But can, have you rejected it so long that the gospel no longer attracts you? Can I share with you a a fear, a fear may not be the right word, a concern that I have in my own life. You know, I, I get to do this, whatever this is, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what I do. But you know, I still have a, I, I'll use the word fear, that may not be the right word. I still have a fear that I will do all of this and become, uh, just become programmed and become like a robot and just do it because we've done it, that's a dangerous place to be. 
I don't want to go through motions. I don't want to go through routines. I, 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 I don't want to go through the programs. I, I don't want to do it this way and change this to make it sound better and do that. No, I want to be spiritually sensitive to the call of God in my life and realize that after I get that part right, then I'll be able to do everything else he's called me to do. The shipmaster said to Jonah, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. Paul said in Ephesians, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 1 Corinthians says it like this, Awake to righteousness, and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Can I ask you tonight, will you hear God calling you today? The road away from God is a downward journey. In the words of Jeremiah 23 and 12, it says, Wherefore their ways shall be unto them as slipperly ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, saith the Lord. I encourage you tonight to check your life. I encourage you tonight to ask yourself, What path are you on? My friend, the journey that ends away from God will end at the very bottom, in a pit of corruption, and in the heart of hell. When the men of the ship realized that the presence of God was causing their difficulty, they were afraid. They, they, they did what? They, they threw Jonah. They cast Jonah overboard. He could not protest, even though he had paid the full fare of the trip. It had been kind of silly for Jonah. said, now boys, I paid a full ticket. Go to Tarshish. And I'm going to Tarshish no matter what you say about it. Well, that didn't last about a half a second with anybody. Because he, he was the cause of their problem. And they said, but I'm using my own words, buddy, we're going to throw you overboard. And we're going to take care of this matter right now. Sin will take you farther than you ever wanted to go. The devil never gives you your money worth. Think about it. He never gives you what he said he sold you. He lied to you from the beginning, and he will lie to you all the way through it. Anytime you barter with the devil, the devil gets the best of the bargain. Pastor, well, I, 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 I've, I've seen some folks that have done some pretty remarkable things. Yeah, the pleasures of sin last but for a season. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You'll pay full fare but you'll only get half the benefits. Closing tonight, there is a beautiful lesson to learn from this story. I'm going to get you out while the sunlight's still up. Praise the Lord. Beautiful lesson to learn. Along with this distasteful, controversial picture of this man being thrown overboard, being swallowed by a great fish, Jesus calls it a well. Listen to me. It not only tells us how Jonah fled, but it also tells us how God followed him. It tells us not only of Jonah going away from the presence of the Lord, but God sent that wind to pursue Jonah. He prepared that fish to receive him when he had to leave the ship. And the Lord prepared a great fish is what the scriptures say specifically. And then I'm so thankful for chapter 2, verse number 1. If you've got your Bibles open, this is what it says. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. I'm glad we can pray a second time, aren't you? When he saw there was no other way of escape, he said, I better call upon the Lord. He better, we better call upon the Lord. He said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward the holy temple. When my soul fainteth within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. Then he quoted a Psalms in verse number 9, when he says, I will pay that that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. You know, just as important, I believe, as Jonah ended up in the belly, the fish, just as important as I believe Jonah needed to pray unto the Lord again, I am also thankful. We find in Scripture, in the book of Jonah, it says, And the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Does it matter how far you've fallen? doesn't matter how long that journey down has been. If you will call out to God, I believe through His Word and through faith that He will speak to you again.
If you have ran into a temptest, it could be that the temptest is caused by Almighty God to awaken you from your sleep. There is no place where you can escape the presence of God. There is no place you can go, high or low, that you will free yourself from His presence. So why not reach out and touch God? Why not allow Him to become the full master of your entire life? Why not say, Lord, I can't do it without you. I give it all to you. Don't resist Him any longer. I'm hoping I can learn from Jonah. And I'm hoping that I'll be spiritual and sensitive enough to the Spirit of God that when He speaks to me and says, Thomas, go to Nineveh, I won't question it at all, but I'll go to Nineveh. But Lord, if I struggle, and if I find myself at Joppa buying a boat ticket to Tarshish, Father, if I find myself in the boat going to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord, thankful that your word tells us that you will pursue us father i ask tonight as we are coming to a close of this service father that you'll check the hearts of men and women alike in this sanctuary father i don't know the depths of their relationship with you father I, i don't know where they stand i know where i stand tonight and that's the one i'll give an account for but lord i pray as the shepherd of this flock god that you will allow us to see ourselves as you see us tonight God, are we moving toward the presence of the Lord or are we moving away from the presence of the Lord? Father, I don't want to end up like we read in the Word of God where Samson shook himself and wished not the Spirit of the Lord was not even with him any longer. Father, we we hear it time and time again. How did it get this bad? How did we get in this situation? I thought I could keep it under control. I can tell us how tonight, Lord. It's because that, that, that journey in sin will always take us in a downward motion. But Lord, tonight you've given us an opportunity to fall back in love with Jesus. God, you've given us an opportunity to hear the voice of the Lord one more time. Lord, I'm thankful for that tonight. And Lord, I don't know. As far as everybody here, they may profess to be saved. Father, if we're not tonight, I pray the convicting power of the Holy Ghost will touch us. Lord, there may be a a family, an adult, Lord, a mom, a dad, a a daughter, a son. Lord, that's struggling right now. And they've even said in recent days, I'll just go a different way. Lord, could it be you stopped them by tonight to remind them that if they leave your presence, you will pursue after them, but they have to make the decision to follow you. Or could it be this was their warning? Could it be this was their warning tonight? Strengthen us tonight, I pray. We'll forever give you praise and honor and glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we ask tonight. Church, I'm going to invite us to come and find us a place to pray around this altar. I don't care if you are fired up, full up, ready to go up. You still can draw closer to Jesus tonight and to his presence. If you have not been where you need to be with God, why don't you come? While the church is moving, won't you call upon the Lord tonight? Won't you ask him to lead you and guide you? Why don't you ask him, Lord, to...